Okay. All right, um, good day everyone and good afternoon to all of you. Okay, thank you for taking time to join this uh, webinar of healthcare uh, transformation through RFID, uh, organized by Avery Dennison with the partnership of NXP, Identify RFID, uh, Henry Healthcare, uh, yes, Henry Healthcare. Right. My name is Johanna. I am leading the communications in ASEAN region at Avery Dennison. I will be your host today. Let me start by introducing our speakers. Evelyn, Marketing Develop Market Development Manager of Avery Dennison, who leads the digital transformation platform through RFID, uh, leads the digital transformation platform through RFID will be speaking with us about trends and pressure in the healthcare industries and how, uh, how adopting a digital identity helps the critical and sensitive industry. Next, then we will actually um, bring you to Stefan, Director of Business Development at NXP, who will be sharing with us today about the technical side of RFID and how it makes healthcare smarter. Next, we will have Virat, General Manager of Identify RFID, will be, a, will be then talking through with us about smart cabinet, which are being used widely across hospitals in Thailand. We shall conclude our webinar with the last session by S.H. Park, Director of Global Business Development and Investment Reviews of Henry Healthcare, who will be sharing with us about external and internal use cases for medical devices. So um, from then on, as we go, go through the Q&A sessions, uh, due to the limited time available, some of our speakers have prepared the FAQs. Um, in case uh, you have any questions, please post your questions in the chat box and we shall go through it if time permits. You may connect with our speakers after the event as well if you have further comments or discussions. All right, with that, I shall now pass on to our first speaker of the day, uh, Evelyn, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, Johanna, um, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, today, I will be sharing insights and trends about adopting digital identification in healthcare. Um, I have 17 years of experience in the RFID industry, and I have been involved in several large projects in various industries such as retail, food, oil and gas, manufacturing, and of course, healthcare. My current role in Avery Dennison involves developing the healthcare and pharmaceutical market and driving adoption of digital identification technologies in the APEC region. In the next 10 minutes or so, I will be covering these three topics. Firstly, a very short corporate introduction of who Avery Dennison is. Secondly, a high level overview of the challenges, trends and pressures the healthcare industry is currently facing. And finally, how we are able to address these challenges with the use of digital identification technology. Avery Dennison is a global material science company specializing in the design and manufacture of a wide range of labels. I am from this division called Intelligent Labels, where we believe in a future where every item will have a digital identity and a digital life. 
We believe it is a question of when and not if the digital world will take off. We are currently the world's largest UHF RFID partner with more than 30 billion tags manufactured to date. Our extensive experience and comprehensive portfolio covers a variety of industry segments such as retail, food and beauty, logistics, healthcare, and automotive, just to name a few. Let's take a closer look at the challenges, trends, and pressures the healthcare industry is facing today. A very common challenge facing many countries right now is the rising cost of healthcare. With many countries facing an aging population and rising prevalence of chronic diseases, it is inevitable that the demand for healthcare services increases. The lack of healthcare workers, especially during this current period of pandemic, where we are, uh, further uh, exacerbates the problem. Patients these days are also more educated and demanding as there is greater expectations of transparency and ownership of personal records, such as healthcare records. Easy access of information over the internet is actually a double-edged sword. On one hand, they are able to make informed decisions and take charge of their own health. But on the other hand, there are patients who think that they know everything and cast doubts on the doctor's professional judgment. Some patients even excessively question their prescribed course of treatment. Or you know, even worse, they take matters into their own hands by self-diagnosing or self-prescribing medications. There is also a change in care model in the sense that more countries are shifting their focus and resources towards prevention and wellness. You know, like the saying goes, prevention is better than cure. So this is very much in line with what um, we have been, what we have been preaching about, or rather what they have been preaching about. Lastly, it is evident in the healthcare industry that there are more resources channeled towards digital transformation and leveraging on technologies to streamline their processes, reduce current process inefficiencies, or solve their current problems. RFID is one of such technologies that is widely accepted and adopted in the healthcare industry. And why is this so? So let's go, let's take a deeper look into the very real problems that the healthcare and pharmaceutical industry are facing. First of all, the lack of complete supply chain visibility can lead to numerous issues. There have been countless examples of counterfeit drugs being introduced into legitimate supply chains. Product diversion is also a very common problem. As long as the same product is being sold at different prices in different geographical locations, the problem of, of diversion is likely to happen. We are seeing this problem not just in drugs, but in other highly regulated items such as tobacco and wine. It is not good enough to have visibility of you know, limited information like quantity and SKU of your inventory in the supply chain. Sometimes it is also necessary to know the status of your environment such as the temperature conditions and how long it takes to get from one point to another. This is especially critical for temperature sensitive and fast expiration nature of certain kind of drugs. And this is also the reason why we are seeing greater demand for a hybrid solution that combines both digital identification technologies as well as sensor-based technologies to, to provide more insights about the item. And without clear visibility of a supply chain, any out of the ordinary events such as um, out of stock situation, recalls or market withdrawals can be a very painful, expensive and time consuming exercise. No pharmaceutical companies would want any damages to the bottom line or reputation. And all of them will tell you that drug integrity and patient safety are of utmost importance. Visibility of inventory is not just limited to drugs. There are many other medical devices, assets, tools, consumables, linen, and in recent cases, you probably read a lot in the papers of masks and PPE. These are items that have to be properly managed for hospitals to function well. In a hospital setting, you will need to have the right items at the right time, at the right location. Any inaccuracy in any of this area is a matter of life and death potentially. I was actually involved in a project a couple of years ago, whereby, uh, and this project is in the US, whereby nurses in wards are hoarding infusion pumps. 
The reason why they are hoarding is because they are not able to get hold of it as and when, when they need it. Sometimes these pumps, need, these pumps need to be calibrated. So sometimes these pumps are just out of service for calibration or just misplaced in a corner somewhere in the ward or they're just some, somebody else is hoarding. So what happens is when such situation, nurses just place order for more and more infusion pumps. It's just an easier way to solve this problem. Works fine for the nurses, but from a hospital perspective, the budget of purchasing such items keep increasing every year. And why, why are they doing that? Just because they don't have good management and visibility of their inventory and assets. This is true, not just for infusion pumps, but in hospital, there are many expensive devices where they have to share among different wards or different medical, de and different medical departments. Technology can also be used beyond hospital settings into home care. With the use of NFC, which stands for Near Field Communications, patients are able to gain access to information about the medicines with a tap of their phones instead of you know, those leaflets that you see in packaging, those you have to keep unfolding it, and you have to read a lot of small prints, small words in fine prints in six or 10 languages. With the same technology, pharmacy is able to link the dispensed drugs with patient information to provide patients dose instructions or medication schedules. A very key benefit of using NFC on drugs is to provide a consumer or patients with the ability to verify authenticity of the drug. NFC opens open up an entire world of possibilities, reaping tons of benefits for various stakeholders from the pharmaceutical companies to dispensaries to the patients. So now, how is this possible? How, how, is, it, how is this that this technology is so wonderful? Remember at the beginning of the presentation, I shared that um, Avery Dennison's vision is to have every item with a, that has a digital identity and a digital life. Well, we believe the journey starts when an item is born and a digital identity is given. In other words, each item must contain a chip or the technical term or scientific term is called IC, integrated circuit. What we are seeing here in this picture is an example of a typical RFID label that comprises of the chip, the antenna that allows the wireless communication, as well as the label face top because sometimes people's companies still need to print readable information and barcode on it. And as with all things electronic, um, out of this few components, the chip is the most important component in this structure. Unlike barcodes, RFID can be read without any line of sight, allows bulk grids, and connects seamlessly to digital platforms. The few statistics that you see on the right on this slide are obtained from data captured from many examples of stock counts that we have done. As you can see with RFID, you're able to achieve a much higher inventory accuracy at a fraction of the time taken to do a stock count. Lastly, this is my last slide. Lastly, I'd like to share with you this collateral that we have developed, especially for the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry. This guide is available on our website. And this guide will, will include information such as why RFID is beneficial to the healthcare industry, as well as a list of products that are suitable for tagging that is typical in a medical environment. So there are, there are tags that are suitable to tag valves or assets or drug cartons, for example. Um, after, we can share the link or probably share the attachment with you over email after the webinar. That's all I have today. Um, I will hand it back to you, Johanna. All right, thank you very much, uh, Evelyn. All right, from now we will pass on to our second speaker, Stefan. Stefan, um, to you please. I uh, hope you all can see my screen. Uh, I'm Stefan de Troch from NXP Semiconductors. I'm uh, based in uh, Belgium in Europe, and I hope that the uh, connection is working very well because I'm working out of my home office. Um, let me first start with introducing NXP. Um, we are a semiconductors company, a uh, worldwide semiconductors company, and we are providing ICs for various markets. Important is, that we do not focus only on technology innovation, but we also want to offer an important innovate solutions. 
and the innovations targets, the six domains we are, segments we are showing here. If you look to RFID, those fits in the domains mobile, smart home, smart city and industrial. It is about, and also like what Evelyn already said, it's about efficiency, convenience and also safety. NXP is a Dutch company. Um, we are based in Eindhoven, our headquarters is in Eindhoven. We have employees in 30 plus countries and we did a uh, turnover of almost $9 billion in 2019. Important to know also is that we are a stronghold in research and development. We have 11,000 11, engineers and we have quite a big patent for the portfolio. Let me start with a technical explanation about RFID. Um, RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. And if you look to it, it covers quite some technical solutions. In my presentation, um, I will intermix the terms label and tag. Uh, for me, a label and a tag, and it's also like what Evelyn already explained, it contains the radio, the antenna, and if needed, any other component. Um, typical, these labels are added into the package or put onto the budget, on, on, onto the object you like to track. And typical, uh, inlay makers like Avery Dennison produce these labels. If you look to RFID jargon, we make the difference between what we call active and passive RFID. The big difference between active and passive is that in an active RFID, you have a continuous, continuous broadcast of data while in passive RFID, you have a tag and it only answers when being powered from the radio field or when you address it. Um, from an energy standpoint, there's a big difference. If you have an active tag, you always need a battery. While in a passive tag, you don't need a battery as such because the label gets the energy for the communication from the response from the reader. Some tags, passive tags, may contain a battery. And the reason for those batteries is that they use it to support a longer read distance or, and that's also what Evelyn already talked, you may have hybrid solutions where you combine passive uh, RFID together with sensing. And then you need the battery to do the regular uh, sensing that. Due to the battery, uh, one can state that an active tag is more expensive than an uh, than a, than a passive tag. Um, it's also that the, the radios are also more uh, complex and as a consequence for the IC, it's also more expensive. Um, if you look to examples, um, one big example of an active uh, uh, radio RFID solution are BLE beacons where you use RF BLE radios, but all the technologies that allow active RFID are based on ZB and Wi-Fi. And this, this is not exhaustive, there are other radios also. And in the remainder of this talk, I will focus on passive RFID, especially uh, NSC, near field communication and RAIN RFID. An important thing, and that's also already mentioned by Evelyn, uh, RFID is an RF solution. And in contrast to optical identification technologies like barcodes or QR codes, you do not need a line of sight. And it's also important that you realize that if you have such a label, you also can have it respond on challenges. And the text will use this challenge and will compute and can compute a response. Or you also can have variable data coming out of an embedded sensor like temperature or humidity. And these are, this is important for RFID. Um, when you talk about RFID, um, the people often mean rain, rain, rain RFID. Uh, rain RFID is a UHF technology operating in the frequency bands around 900 megahertz. The other popular RFID technology is NSC, which is a high frequency technology operating around 30.5 megahertz. There is a difference between the use of those solutions and it's sometimes difficult to make a selection. Why, when do you use RAIN RFID? When do you use NSC? And there are two aspects which are important. Uh, one is the reader technology available and what is the range you would like to get. Um, for RAIN RFID, um, 
typical, we are talking about professional readers. And I mean by professional readers are dedicated reader uh, for a product. Uh, um, if you look to availability of them for the mass, you have to think about NSC. Most of the new smartphones have NSC functionality, and that's a big difference. If you want to if you want to talk to end users, you need to think about using NSC technology. If you look to the range, RFID, rain RFID goes to 50 meters. With a smartphone, you can tag and you can go to between five to 10 centimeters for an NSC tag. If you use a professional uh, NSC reader, you can go to up to one or two meters, something like that around a meter. Um, as mentioned already, you can use it to do bulk readout. So both RAIN RFID and NSC allows it, depending on the radio you're using with NSC. Um, what you can say is that the difference in, in cost is that the tag with RAIN RFID is a little bit cheaper than an NSC tag, but they are comparable from a cost point. From an application point, um, RAIN RFID is used of course, for identification, but the most important use cases are track and trace in logistics and inventory control. You also can use it for authenticity. Um, these are the applications there. If you look to um, NSC, it's also identification, but due to the fact that you have it on smartphones and which the end users have, you also can add, add additional end user engagement. I will not go further into details in this speech, but it's a little bit like what Evelyn already said. You can use it to um, interact with your uh, end user, with your patient, and give more information about how to use your product. Other uh, applications are authenticity and anti-tampering. And let me emphasize again, the big differences between choosing RAIN RFID and NSC is if you want to go to end users, you should consider NSC. RAIN RFID is used more in a professional field. Um, in the remainder of my talk, I will, demo, I will give you some use cases. I will allow me to skip here the RAIN RFID use cases as the next two speakers will elaborate more on RAIN RFID use cases. So, I will focus on some NSC enabled use cases. And the first uh, use case, it's about anti-tampering. It's about to detect the opening or the breaking of a seal of your product. Through NSC, a patient or a caregiver can check whether a product has been tampered. Has anyone already opened the product with the risk that some fraud happened with the content? We as NXP sell for this product, for this application, uh, the Antaxton Tag Temper series. They detect an open loop in a seal, um, and that's being called, checked through adding with NSC, and the app will tell it has been tampered. Important also to know is that these chips also have a persistent memory. If you once tap a broken seal, the AIC will store this broken state. And even if somebody tries to fix the seal, and uh, you tap again with a smartphone the label, the message will remain the broken status. And that's important to know. So you can, you can break it, you tap it, but if you want to repair it again, it's, it still gives that the, that the label was, uh, was tampered. The other application, what we have for, um, for NSC, is to detect whether um, a drug or a product it could also be an accessory, is a genuine one. Through tapping on the label, um, and depending on the implementation of the chip, uh, the most advanced chips uh, allow you that the NSC reader generates a challenge on which the NSC chip responds. And with this combination of challenge and response, your phone app, when connected to the cloud, displays whether this is an authentic product or not. We sell for this application the Entag DNA series of ICs, and we also have an equivalent product for RAIN RFID, the UCO DNA. The third use case is about what we call closed loop consumables protection. Um, I've taken the freedom to use a uh, dial dialysis machine. Um, this is a typical machine used in hospital. 
but there's also what we call disposable tubing for sanitary reasons. And each time when you do dialysis to a patient, you use another kit of, uh, of tubes. What you can do with this, if you have an embedded NSC reader in the, in the machine, you could check whether the accessory kit is the right one for the treatment. You may have different kits depending on the therapy, on the dialysis you want to do to a patient. And you can, the, you as a caregiver can already program, I want to give this patient this, this treatment. Uh, and before you do that, you can scan your accessory bag on the, on the dialysis machine and you're sure that you're using the right one. Um, it also avoids that you have to open the bag before uh, using it and that you lose the, uh, st the, that you lose the sterilization. And in this way, you give always the right treatment to the patient without a hassle to the wrong setup. You also can combine this internal reader and a C reader in the product um, to, um, to check uh, the, the originality of the accessories. It guarantees the quality, but also protects the intellectual property. Um, I will now move to more advanced uh, 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 sensors, and that's a little bit. Uh, we have a solution where we combine the hybrid solution, the hybrid solution what Evelyn was showing. It's called the Antac Smart Sensor. It was developed for healthcare applications, and it's a chip combining the, Ant the NSC functionality with sensing and processing. Um, you can use it with or without the battery, and you can extend it. And some of the use cases, what you can do with this Antac Smart Sensor in healthcare, and one is uh, relevant for these COVID-19 times, you can make a uh, passive tag and embed it in a plaster that you can measure body temperature. And fever is one of the COVID-19 symptoms. If a patient uh, gets fever, you can know that he is uh, developing COVID-19. And through a smartphone, the, um, the patient can himself check the temperature and that's uploaded into the cloud and you can then the caregiver can then know how patient is you uh, can know how a patient is behaving the second use case was already mentioned by Evelyn it's about cold chain monitoring there are quite some products which are temperature sensitive and by using the anti smart sensor with a battery in a label you can have cold chain monitoring um, we also have a solution uh, the chip itself is based on NSC, but with a companion chip, you can also use it in an RAIN RFID environment in the logistic chain. And the third application of the anti-smart sensor is the use of smart blisters. Um, it's really about um, how patients are, ad uh, are adhering to their therapy. The World Health Organization sees the non-adherence as a big issue. And using NSC, and a smartphone, you are giving coaching to a patient and you can reduce the non-adherence. And that's the way how it works. And that's a little bit what I wanted to share. Um, if you want to have more information about the RFID solutions for NXP, go to our website. And uh, I also, if you really want to get in contact with us, uh, my colleague Gabor is based in Singapore, um, or you can contact me directly. I don't know whether there are any questions to me. Um, and then I, otherwise I hand the, the control back to Johanna. Uh, thanks, Stefan. Yeah, so um, we will then move on uh, next to Kun Virod, uh, who will talk a little bit more about smart cabinet with us. To you, um, yeah, Kun Virod. Okay. I uh, let me for some okay. Yeah, briefly, I would like to explain about my company first. I'm Vilod from Identify. Uh, basically, we I have been working in IVD for 10 for more than 10 years. Mainly, we work in all kind of project or IVD, both passive and active IVD. In terms of application, I do more for the person and asset tracking. Today, I'm going to talk about the smart cabinet. Mainly we talk about the, the solution to manage the item in the operation room. When we talk about the operation room in Thailand, 
when we talk about this business, the item in the operation room, they sell in the consignment. For the consignment, that means the supplier need to have some small stock in the in each hospital that they would like to sell their product. When they have the small uh, the stock there, that means that they have to send someone to, to the site, to each site to count the product. Then when they go to, when they have someone to call the product, definitely that we had a problem that we have the high inventory cost because sometimes when they go there, the, some, some product not used. And that means that we, the product put in the hospital, they cannot sell it. And at the same time, uh, some product, some product that, uh, that some product not used and then they have to wait all, all for the logistic time to go there to check that the item for each hospital. And the next thing, they when they use the staff to go there, they have to send the staff to manual count each item. But, but uh, basically, the item in the healthcare business is in English language. This can easily cause this for the accuracy because the staff, uh, the staff who go to check the site, they maybe they are not able to read the English language. For the, our solution, <coughs> for our solution, smart cabinet is to solve this problem. Basically, we connect everything like the hospital and the DC or the owner of, of the product linked together with the cloud server. All the, uh, every, all the product items when, when at the central warehouse, we have to embed it with the IV detect. By the embedded with IV detect, that means when we put a tag on the product, we will associate it with the product information, including the product barcode and the product serial and the is expiry date which appear in the barcode also when the product delivered to the hospital it will be put in the cabinet our cabinet have two type of ivd leader one is the hf ivd and the second one is the uhf ivd each one have different purpose uh, for the hf ivd we use it for access to the cabinet that means only the person who have the card or who have who are authorized can access to this cabinet and for the UHF IVD, we use it to scan all the items in the cabinet. <clears throat> when the lead, when the cabinet already scanned all the items, the ID of the tag will send to our cloud server. Our cloud server will do some report and you send know which item to be built to hospital and the planning. They can know that. Okay which type of the product I have to put in the hospital and the logistics to plan for the product delivery and mainly for the nurse to know that product, which item that, that they, they need to use and they're not in the cabinet. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. For the report that I have in our solution, there are two groups. The first group is the product setup and the second group is the staff who access the cabinet. Mainly in this uh, presentation, I will start with the first group. For the uh, product, <clears throat> Inventory, the first thing I will tell the staff that, okay, which item have been used and you need to refill it. Okay. And the second thing, after the product have been refilled, our report also show that which item you have been refilled. And the next one, we will tell the stock item or the inventory item in each hospital. How many items that you, that you have and what is the par level? And we will just get the quantity that you have to put in that cabinet for each hospital. And the next one is the key important thing is the we also highlight the item is going to be expired by leading the IVD tag and the, our cloud server will associate with the barcode that already ex mentioned the expired period for, for the for each item. Why we use IVD for our solution? I think many uh, to our presentation have already mentioned the benefit of IVD. From here you will see that the item in the cabinet. Basically, they will have around 500 items. If you use barcode, you will waste a lot of time to have the staff to scan one by one. But with the IVD, we can leave all the items within less than one minute. And the next thing, uh, all the product items that we have, not all of them is unique. For the IFAD, we can create a unique ID for each item. With the benefit of unique ID, we can know that which item is going to expire, okay? And for this solution, as I mentioned in the beginning, that the problem for uh, for this type of business, that one, we have to send the staff to site to check it. By with our solution, you don't need to send anyone. The system will tell you 
And at the same time, <clears throat> our, uh, the system will tell you the level of the stock. You can know which item with a high movement and which item with low movement. You can do the product planning for each hospital. And the next one, no need for anyone to manual call it. Without any manual counting, you can do the operation time in each, in each hospital. Because when you do counting in the hospital, in the operation room, normally the hospital will allow only a few minutes because they have to use it and they don't want to any contaminate when you do the manual count in the operation room. And the next thing, you can reduce the list for the expired item because RFID can highlight the expired item without any person to reading. Now our hospital, our solution have been installed in many, many, around 20 hospitals. Here is the highlight of some hospitals which have installed our solution. Okay, here is the, do you like to go question to at the end of the presentation? Hello? Hello? You can go through your um, FAQ if you like. Yeah, we still have time for that. Okay. Uh, have you prepared based, the FAQ? Uh, the, yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just uh, we have just have uh, uh, only two questions. The first thing is the, uh, I think I uh, uh, some of my recent presentation already mentioned about this thing. Why we use IFD for the cabinet? Because now most of the hospital already have the cabinet. The thing that we use that we show the IFD because the first the first of the benefit of IFD that they can do the multiple reading for the item in the cabinet as oh. it's for the picture of the cabinet. They have around 500 items. Then it's not possible to do. Second question that I have is the type of IFD frequency. Uh, now we use both HF and UHF for the cabinet because each one have different purpose, but we have to use both to, so, so that our cabinet can have to function to answer the requirement of the client. Okay, hello. We can hello. hear you, Kuriro. Yeah, please go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I finished my presentation. All right. Yep. I finished my presentation. Yep. Okay, thank you very much, Kuriro. So now we'll pass on to our last speaker for today, um, Mr. S.H. Park. Uh, to you, you will talk more about internal and external use of cases for medical devices. To you. Hi, my name is S.H. Park, and I'm going to introduce two RFID use cases by Ami Healthcare. Do you all hear me clearly? All right, all right. The first use case is a medical um, device distributor, Cook Medical, in Australia. So consignment invent inventory management has, uh, it is uh, available in multiple uh, countries hospitals in multiple countries. It is uh, because the hospitals are not responsible for the inventory, it introduces a lot of pain points for the supplier. It is already explained uh, by the previous speakers, I'm gonna skip this. This is the overview of the logistics of Cook Medical in Australia. As you can see, there is direct uh, consignment and purchases between the medical device supplier and hospitals. And also there is another channel via subdistributor. With the implementation of HAMIS KDAS RFID solution, we tagged all the medical devices and they were all checked and traced along the supply chain. These are some of the benefits uh, introduced after the implementation because they had now they have much higher visibility, they can keep the safety stock level much lower. And when the safety stock level is low enough, then the, uh, the order is generated automatically. Stocking itself is much quicker. And because it's uh, consignment, they have to count the stock regularly. And it used to take about two hours, and now it takes 10 to 15 minutes with RFID technology. And also the data is compared. And when there is a need for a billing, it is done automatically. Here's a quick comparison between barcode and RFID. 
as you can see, uh, the time for stock counting is much less than before. And also, the inventory accuracy is much higher. Well, we all know that the RFID technology has its benefits, but, but it also means there is added cost. So we, we are looking at the ROIs. There are two different returns. One is direct, the other is indirect. When it comes to direct return, there's a cost reduction because of the reduced missing products and also the lower safety stock level. We estimate it up to 5%. And also there are indirect returns because of the reduced leading time and also more efficient process of logistics. These are some of the reference cases by Hanmi Healthcare for medical device distributors. Our second use case is Hanmi Pharmaceutical in South Korea. In Korea, the government has been pushing serialization over the past years. They expanded uh, the target drugs over time. Hanmi Pharmaceutical uh, was, try, uh, was comparing Barcos and RFID in 2012, and they decided to go with uh, RFID technology supplied by Hanmi Healthcare. Hanmi Pharmaceutical is one of the top uh, pharmaceutical companies in Korea. And at the time of implementation, they had 42 product lines, 585 different products, and they processed 60 million items per year. There are different package types, and it means we had to uh, try and test different tags and uh, methods to make RFID really work and uh, be successful. For example, with aluminum foil, uh, because the aluminum interferes with the uh, radio signal, uh, we had to introduce a separate space in the box. Later, we eliminated that space with a different method. With uh, bottles, uh, we uh, attached the RFID tags uh, on the back side of the labels. I uh, prepared a video for the production. It doesn't have any sound. This, uh, the first one was for the production and now for the shipping process. Again, there's no sign.
So after the implementation, uh, the results uh, include uh, various uh, improvements. The in inventory management accuracy went up, of course, and the overall processing time actually re was reduced uh, when it's compared than before. So with the, uh, even with the uh, introduction of serialization, um, how many pharma pharmaceutical could increase the effic efficiency? And how many pharmaceutical got the uh, best RFID implementation winner in 2013? And how many healthcare's um, RFID solution KDAS is compliant with e pedigree and it's just one EPC global certified? These are the reference cases uh, that we have in pharmaceutical industry. So Hami Healthcare's RFID solution is called KDAS. And it, is, um, it has interfaces with legacy systems such as ERP, WMS, and MMS. And also it has the other report, report modules for government agencies when it's required by the local uh, regulations. We developed a uh, bunch of patents uh, while developing our uh, solution, and it's all, uh, they are all applied to. These are some of the features. I'm not going to uh, go into the details here. And the dashboard of KDAS has all the uh, important information items there. So it increases the management, uh, management and it improves the analysis capabilities. And uh, we also have uh, RF uh, Reader, it's called RF Prisma, and it works with our solution KDAS. Hami Healthcare is a company in South Korea, and it has businesses in healthcare enterprise solutions, RFID solutions, health supplements, foods, digital healthcare, and medical devices. Hami Healthcare is in Hami Pharmaceutical Group, and the Hami Pharmaceutical is an affiliate. We prepared two quick questions. Um, they're all very, um, I don't know, basic uh, questions, but I thought that this might be interesting to some of our audiences. Um, so the cost, uh, when, when our customer introduce, introduces a KDAS solution, uh, there are basically two parts. One is the system implementation and the other is maintenance cost. Um, the system implementation includes RFID tag reader and printer. Um, but for medical device uh, uh, distributors, uh, there isn't that, that, that much uh, equipment requirement there. After the initial uh, setup and installation, the main maintenance cost uh, mainly depends on how many tags uh, the customer uses. Uh, for more information, please contact us. Uh, and how long does it take to implement KDAS solution? Again, for medical device uh, distributor, it doesn't take that long. It usually takes a week or two, including uh, the training. Uh, the training is necessary because uh, their staff needs to know, know how to work with this RFID technology, and uh, it usually takes about two weeks. For pharmaceutical setup, uh, it can take uh, longer, as you, as you can uh, probably guess from the video. Uh, again, for more information, please contact us. Contact information is here. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, SH. Um, that actually ends our presentation. So now we are open to the questions. So uh, first, perhaps we would like to take through the questions that we have um, from uh, Rich, right? Let me just take a quick look. Let me, let me see what the questions that we have. All right, one moment. Yeah, so uh, Rich uh, had asked about which NFC chip do you recommend from NXP? So Stefan, would you like to take that question? Yes, I will take it. Um, it's, a difficult, uh, it's difficult to give an answer on 
um, exactly which type I should recommend. It really depends on the functionality. So we have chips only doing the tech functionality, the, and these are the, the chips we call the NTAC family. Uh, if you want to do functionality like what I explained for detecting tampering of packages, you, you should look into the family, what we call the NTAC tech temper. Uh, if you want to go to uh, authentication, where you really would like to know whether a product is genuine, we recommend to use the NTAC uh, DNA family. And if you want to do solutions where you want to combine sensing, for example, temperature sensing with NFC readout, it's the anti smart sensor. Um, it's that's a little bit the uh, arena you have to look into. And my proposal would be is that you reach out to me and that you explain the use case you have and that we follow up uh, offline. Okay, good. Um, so thanks, Stefan. Um, yeah, please uh, reach your me connect with Stefan later. All right, so uh, if you all have more questions, you can post it on the chat box. Let's go to the next question uh, from Ricardo. There was the example of RFID attached to skin for measuring body temperature. My question are how are they attached to the skin? Are they waterproof? Can be they taken on and off for multiple times? Do they have a better battery inside? Yeah, please. Uh, okay, let me answer it also. Um, so Ricardo, the, the, the first question is how are they attached? Um, typical what we provide is a chip and with the antenna and that's done on an inlay. And what you then have is what you call the conversion that you create a label out of it. The way how it is attached to the skin is through the, uh, you can use some body compatible um, um, glue that you can put it on the skin. So that's the way how it is. So it's good through gluing. And then by uh, ideally you use body friendly glue like what you're using for wound care, those kinds of things. Uh, are they waterproof? Uh, that's a matter of, uh, of the lamination. And I've seen examples where customers were able to integrate RFID, uh, and RFID labels and also this one that they see it in a way that's waterproof. Uh, can they be taken on and off? That's an, an answer which depends on the quality of the glue you're using. Um, I cannot say, uh, I assu assume yes, they can be taken off but I don't know how many times and it really depends on the quality of the glue. And I'm also a little bit looking to my colleagues from Avery Dennison, whether they know more about properties of uh, gluing and labels. I think that's their competence. Um, the example I showed here was without a battery. It was really passive. So you really uh, have the patch on your arm, you tap it and you read it out through the smartphone. But you also can make a version with a battery inside if you want to monitor continuously the evolution of the temp of the body temperature. So it's a matter of use case you want to use. You can go quite cheap in a passive way, but if you want to see, for example, the evolution of the temperature over a week, you add a little battery and then you can after some days you can read out what was the evolution of the temperature of the person wearing that uh, that body, that uh, that plaster. I hope this gives you an answer, Ricardo. And if you need yeah. more information, Ricardo, contact us about it so we can explain more in detail if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Stefan and Ricardo, for your question. Yeah, Evelyn, you have anything to add? I guess you're referring to the adhesive, right? Um, well, it, it all depends on the type of adhesive that you use and um, and how many times it can be removed and attached also depends on the use case because if a, if a person is sweaty, then, you know, it's like plaster, right? There's a, there's a, the, the, the chances of reusing it is lower if the surface is not clean. So I think there are a lot of options out there and it really depends on the hospital or the customer on how many times they want to reuse it. 
All right, thanks, uh, Evelyn. So Ricardo still have one more question for us. Um, how long the battery last, Stefan? Well, <clears throat> that's an answer uh, which depends on the capacity of the battery. Um, if you use a coin cell uh, kind of battery, and you take a typical like a 3032, you easily can lock for half a year. But it really depends on the use case. If you use a battery with a, with a lower capacity, you can make it working for one week, two weeks, one month. It's all depending on how you want to do it. Um, there are two things you have to keep in mind for the logging. It's indeed the battery uh, capacity. And the other aspect is what, how much data you want to store. Um, with our, we have a demo application in our SDK and we can go up to uh, 18,000 uh, points and you can count how much time it is. So if you lock the temperature each 10 minutes, you're gone for, I would say three, six months, but it all depends how accurate, how, how, how you, what you want to lock, whether it's only the moments you are in outside the band you want to know or inside. So you can optimize there. I also see, um, uh, the the question around from Richard Williamson about the accuracy. Um, the chip um, has an accurate, we calibrate the chip in our production and in the range zero to 40 degrees Celsius, we have a, an absolute accuracy of 0.3 degrees Celsius. But for such a patch, if you want to monitor the evolution, um, the accuracy is what we do in our cali when we calibrate it in our production. You want to know the evolution, and there we have an we have a resolution of the measurements we are doing is uh, 0.02 degrees Celsius. So you very can you can very accurately monitor the evolution of the temperature. Um, the absolute accuracy is important. On the other hand, you have to realize that each person has a different body temperature from nature. So some persons are 36.3, others are 30 points, 36.6 as a typical temperature. So that's what you have to keep in, into account if you talk about temperature accuracy. I hope this gives you an answer to Richard. All right, um, Richard, if you still have any further question, you may uh, let us know or reach out to Stefan or any one of us later. Right, thank you. Do we still have more questions? Uh, okay, so um, okay, so Richard was saying, well, and this can be used on medicine bottles in delivering medicine. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's one of the use cases. Also, if you have a battery, you can think about monitoring the cold chain on an interval basis. It's also something relevant if you think about vaccines. If you want to know whether the vaccine is uh, still uh, still has uh, the efficacy you expect from it, yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. Uh, Richard had made some comments here. Okay. The reason being, we have a customer that delivers and need accurate five temperature five minutes before injection. All right. Maybe we can take that offline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please, Richard, uh, contact either uh, Gabo or myself. Yeah. Okay, so we probably can take one more question from Swati. Can this be used in Inmo labeling? Stefan? Um, I'm not an expert on Inmo labeling. <laughs> um, I would say uh, there should be no problem. Uh, the only thing what you have to realize is it's a temperature sensor. Um, you have to think about if you put more material around it, it's like uh, isolating your house. Um, it takes a little bit longer before you get the temperature uh, out as the outside world, out, as outside. So it depends on what you mention. And by putting it in a bigger package, you have a longer, I um, uh, would say, thermal inertia, I would say. And that you have to take into account. If you make it, for, if, you, if, the, if it's, the chip is very close to the skin and it's a thin layer, it will immediately react. But if it has, an, if it has a big uh, material and it acts like a kind of an, of an uh, uh, it really acts then as like an inertion for the temperature, something like that. That's what you have to take into account. But the accuracy remains the same. It's just uh, reacting a little bit slower to come to the same temperature evolution. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I'll just add to that on a little bit on the inmo uh, labeling side. Um, so it also depends on the inmo process. Um, because most of the time in mold labeling or in mold process would involve high temperature. So we do need to see what's the highest temperature that the tech will be exposed to and for how long. Um, what we have to watch out for is the chip as well as the connection of the chip to the circuitry of the sensors. So I think, I think we'll need more information before we can um, advise whether it's doable. Yeah, okay, so I uh, will just take the last two questions because we are already at the end of our time. So, um, so one, one uh, question is from Aditya. Aditya, I hope I've pronounced your name correctly. How are RF, RFID chips fabricated? So, uh, maybe Evelyn, your... <laughs> Well, it's RFID chip, probably Stefan's question. If you okay. ask RFID tag in label, I will answer it. <laughs> Stefan, okay. over to you. <laughs> well, RFID chips are produced like any other I see in the industry. So very often uh, we, are, we have what we call the, the foundries. And there we are really producing uh, on silicon material through, through lithography. And what is, it's very, uh, very technical. But it's just an other, uh, it's a neat photo, deco, uh, photo lithography that we are using for that in our fab. So we are really doing a lot of steps. And I think for the chips we are talking about, it takes quite some time to go to the, to, to the fab. But in the end, what we do, it's running on a wafer. It's then, uh, uh, then uh, we then thin them, we slice them, and then we deliver them to our customers like Avery Dennison, who then take them out of an, what we a blue foil wafer and they put it then on the label itself so it's indeed like other MEMS yes okay. I hope it gives you an answer Aditya okay so just last question from Hyun does, pos does possible for animal and fruits uh, I'll take this um, well this is a healthcare um, webinar. That's why we did not mention anything about animal and fruits, but absolutely, um, RFID is a digital identity technology. So we can always also use the technology to identify animals. And also uh, in Australia, we are, is, what's very popular is the meat cut, where we are, we are using the technology to identify the different kinds of uh, meat cut. Fruit as well, uh, probably the more high-end one like avocado and, and stuff, where we want to have visibility of the supply chain. Um, so yes, it's definitely possible. And if you need more information, you can either go to our website. We have a separate segment called food. You can find a lot of information in there or you can drop me an email if you have any specific questions. Okay, so I think um, that's it. Uh, yeah, we are running out of time. So I think that's the end of our session. So we had, um, I hope you had enjoyed the webinar session. All right, as much as I do. On behalf of Avery Dennison and our partners for this webinar, I'd like to thank all of you for joining this event and making it a success. So you may reach out to the speakers after this. If you have further questions, we'll also be sharing you the recording at later stage. Um, last but not least, to all our speakers, thank you very much for your time and uh, presentation. And I wish everyone a great day ahead, right? Thank you very much. Good day, bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, bye-bye.